Hi, my name is Roland and welcome to my Vectrex Shirley Show. Today I would like to talk about some PlayStation related items from my collection. Maybe some of my viewers will already know that I like light gun games and here I would like to focus on the Sony PlayStation 1 system. I like that system and one of the main reasons for that is that there are different kind of interesting controllers available you could get for that console. Besides the typical original PlayStation controllers and the light guns, you could also get this SCPH1110 controller here, a twin stick controller based on real analog technology and one of my favorite joysticks of my whole collection. I showed that controller a long time ago on my channel and even I don't quite like the style of my older videos, I will link to that video as you can see that controller in action there and some of the games that support it. And it also seems that not really everyone knows that this controller ever existed so go and check that out. There were also quite cool racing controllers available that I showed a long time ago here on my channel and I will link also to that video. Now let's come to the main topic of this video and you see now the first of the two different types of light guns I own for the PlayStation 1. The main reason for me that the good old PlayStation 1 is still relevant today for light gun games is the fact that there are great games out there and especially games like Point Blank did age well and are still fun today. Arcade games with guns are quite old and were even around the 1930s, long before electronic video games, even they operated differently of course. This light gun here is made by a company called 4Gamers and I don't think they are still around today as the web link printed on the box is not working anymore. There were several similar light guns with similar features available. On the back side of the box you see already some of the features of that light gun. It is compatible with a wide variety of PS1 light gun titles, so it can also handle older games that are not based on Namco's GunCon or G-Con technology, but Konami's technology instead. This is great in case you want only one single light gun for your PS1 that works with all games out there. You have features like auto fire and auto reload and you can even set the number of shots after which the gun reloads automatically, a fancy feature I never really used so far. You can switch on a vibration effect if you want and the gun came even with a foot pedal. Here we see now what came in the box, so of course there is the light gun and there are many switches on that thing for all the different options and features. It even came with some kind of plastic clip-on side scope. There were some crosshairs you could slide in on the front. But to be honest, you don't really need all of that. It just looks funny, but does not really improve the gameplay in my opinion. This is the floor pedal that came with the gun. As far as you remember, you don't have to use that. It is just optional. There were some arcade games that used the pedal like Time Crisis for example and I guess the idea was that you could get now the real arcade feeling also at home. There is the controller plug from the gun that goes into the PS1 controller port and there is also a separate cable to get the video sync signal from your video port of your PS1. This is required for later light gun games, for older more primitive light guns like the so called Konami Justifier for example, you didn't need any additional video sync signal. If you want to know how to connect it now to your PlayStation, I will come to that later. This here is the second type of light gun for the PlayStation 1 I got. This is an original Namco GunCon. In Europe it was called G-Con 45 as you can see on the box here. I think the GunCon came out around 1994 and with that device you can only play later PS1 GunCon light gun games. 
My version here is made of grey plastic that color was different in different parts of the world. There is no floor pedal and none of the fancy features you saw on the first light gun before, but still it works great and if you want to play only gun con games like Time Crisis and Point Blank, there is nothing wrong with buying that light gun here. There was also a GunCon 2 for PlayStation 2 and a GunCon 3 for PlayStation 3 available, but in this video I want to focus only on the PlayStation 1. Maybe we will also do a similar video for the PS2 in the future. First let's make one thing clear before you can enjoy old PS1 and PS2 light gun games and even light gun games for other older retro gaming systems. You need a proper old school CRT TV or monitor. CRT alone is not enough, in most cases you cannot use later generations of CRT monitors either and I am talking about TVs which provided 100Hz or even higher refresh rates, so just use a standard 50Hz or 60Hz CRT monitor like mine you see here. This is a Sony Trinitron monitor and the picture quality and colors are great for old standard definition gaming systems like the PlayStation 1 and 2. Some of my viewers might say now, but Roland, I can play light gun games on my Nintendo Wii on my new HD TV. Yes, that's true, but those games are not based on classic light gun technology, which works differently. Anyway, my monitor here was once part of a video conferencing system and I'm very happy that I got that. I guess some of my younger viewers might not know that it can get quite complicated to get a proper picture from old consoles on a new HD TV, so an old CRT monitor like mine here is really great, as long as you have the space for it and that thing is really heavy. Often people seem to be confused how to connect now the video sync signal needed for your gun con compatible light gun, but it is quite simple and it works the same way also on your PS2. Most of you will already know that you can connect your PlayStation 1 or 2 to your TV or monitor using SCART RGB, SVHS or composite video. SCART RGB gives you the best picture, but you will not find such a connector on most TVs in the US. SVHS is the next best thing and you will get worse picture quality than with RGB. And if you cannot use anything else, you have to use composite video. With that the picture quality is awful, but it works with almost any old TV out there. So what you need in most cases is a plug like that, that either comes with your light gun or you can buy it on eBay if it is missing. You put it on the back of your PS1 or PS2 and plug in your video cable. The Video Sync RCA or Change plug comes into the Video Sync jack and the controller plug comes into the controller jack and you're ready to go. If you use a second light gun for two player games, you simply connect the video sync plug of your second light gun with the first one. You can also buy PlayStation RGB cables where the video sync jack is already built in and that's what I use in my setup here. I will not explain now how exactly that old light gun technology really works as this video would get too long then. I got many PS1 light gun games, but in this video we will have a look now at only three of them, but I might show some more games in a future video. Theoretically, all those games should also run on a PlayStation 2, but I had problems with mine, can't remember the details now and what was wrong, as I didn't really care as I still own a PS1 anyway. Here we see Time Crisis, this was a Namco arcade game which came out in 1995 and was ported for the PS1 in 1997 and in some cases it came even bundled with Namco Guncom G-Con light guns. Time Crisis is a first person rail shooter and there is a long background story which is not really that important. All you need to know is that you just have to shoot the bad guys and you can duck behind cover to avoid enemy fire and reload your weapon. In all of those light gun games there is a special screen to calibrate your light gun first. 
This is neither super detailed review nor a playthrough, just some random gameplay footage. And I guess most people that like light gun games will also like this title here. It is pretty fun and entertaining. There were also PS2 titles of the Time Crisis series available, but that might be a subject for another video. The next game I find somehow obscure. This is Resident Evil Survivor. It was released in 2000 and it was called Biohazard Gun Survivor in Japan, I think. The Japanese and European versions were compatible with the Gamcon G-Con 45 light guns, but unfortunately that feature was removed from the North American release because of the whole violence in video games discussion. Again, some short random gameplay footage. This game looks differently than the classic first Resident Evil titles before. This here is a first person shooter. There was also another Resident Evil light gun title available for the PS2, which had better controls in my opinion than this title here. I am not really an expert for games like that as I prefer more short arcade style games, but using a light gun in a Resident Evil game is pretty interesting and was a novelty back then. I'm not sure if it really makes the game easier though, and I think that most Resident Evil fans out there would agree that this is not one of the best games in the series. Still, if you got a light gun and your PlayStation can run Japanese or European discs, it is worth getting this game as long as it is not super expensive. Now let's come to my absolute favorite light gun game series. This is Point Blank. This came out in the arcade in 1994. Point Blank 1 is great, but if you have the choice, try to get Point Blank 2 or 3 first, as they look a bit more polished. What is so special with that game series is that two players can play simultaneously against each other and this game is great for gaming parties and also in case your guests don't know much about video games, they still will have a lot of fun with Point Blank. So if you have a working PS1, go and get two light guns and Point Blank 2 or 3. If you have family with kids and you don't feel comfortable that your kids play around with a controller that looks like a gun, Point Blank is one of those titles that still might be acceptable for you then. In the game there are different missions that require speed, quick judgement or pinpoint accuracy, so it is more than just trying to hit some targets like in other light gun shooter games. It is hard to describe even I would talk now for hours about this game, it is much easier to experience it, so give it a try in two player mode yourself and you will see what I mean. This game definitely deserves the Vectrex Rolly seal of quality. At the end of this video I also want to mention the mobile version of Point Blank and here you see the version for the Nintendo DS. So is this really a light gun game? Well the idea is that you are touching the targets on the screen so basically you are tapping instead of shooting. And even it is hard to believe that concept works somehow and the game is still fun, not as good as the real thing with light guns of course, but still interesting for fans of the genre I would say. 
By the way, if you want to use two light guns with point blank in two player mode, I would recommend to get two similar models, so that both players do have the same conditions. The original Namco Guncon or G-Con models are fine for that, you don't really need all the fancy features of some third party light guns in my personal opinion. So I hope that was interesting and entertaining for you. If you still own an old CRT TV, maybe you will go and get a PlayStation 1 with light guns. Those things are not really that expensive nowadays. Please like, share and subscribe. Feel free to leave a comment. Thanks for watching.